Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little bit different, something a little bit more hands-on. Do you ever find yourself going on Amazon and seeing a product that you really like, but at that time it's just too expensive? So you end up constantly coming back and checking the price waiting for it to go down? How great would it be if something could do that for you? So that's what we're going to do today. There's a nice pair of headphones I like and we're going to build a bot using Python that's going to go on Amazon and check the price of these headphones every day. Once the price goes down below the number that I gave it, it's going to send me an email and notify me that it's time to buy. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so there are some nice headphones that I want to buy. So let's get started. First you'll want to open your text editor of choice. And we have this little project template set up for us, but all we really need is a single Python file. So I'm going to make this Python file. I'll just call it amazonbot.py. All right, so before we write any code, let's put down some comments of what we want to achieve. So the first thing we want is to write some code that's going to be able to actually check the price. The second thing we want is to be notified when the price goes down below a certain number. For getting notified, we're going to use emails. So we have a plan. We're going to have a bot that's going to check the price. When the price is below a certain number, we're going to get an email. And then we can come on and actually buy the headphones. So the first thing we want to do is create a main function. We can just Google this, Python main. Programming languages typically all have a main function. And we can just copy it and drop it in our code. This is the best website for looking up things for Python because this is the official Python documentation. This is the boilerplate to run the main, which means everything under it is going to get run. This is just a comment. And we can try running our file now. And we get this error. So the error says name main is not defined. So when this tries to run line seven, as it points out right here, it's trying to run a function called main that doesn't actually exist. So we can just delete that for now and just print the number. So as you see, we're able to print the number one, which means now we have something to work with. So now let's start with this first point. We need something to check the price of the headphones. So we'll create a function and we'll call it check price. So to check the price, we're going to make a request to this page and then get the price. So we need a way to get our code to make an HTTP request. So we can Google Python HTTP request. So this should do it. So you can use pip to install it. Pip is a tool for installing things like this for Python, basically Python dependencies. So we can go pip3 because I'm using Python3, install, requests. And now we can follow this guide. So right here, import requests. Make sure this is one tab or four spaces. And let's just drop our URL in here. Now the nicer way of doing this is to put this into a variable. So let's put our URL into a variable. So r.txt will print us basically the contents of the page. And over here now in our main, what we want to do is call this block. So we're going to say check price. Okay, so we got some HTML over here. So this isn't actually the content of the page. If you look through this HTML, you're not going to find the price or anything about the product. So there's two reasons this is failing. It's missing one header and it's adding another header that we don't want. So what we want to do is remove one header and add another header. The header we want to add is called user agent and the header we want to remove is called accept encoding. 
You can get your user agent from Google. Yeah, it comes up right here. And let's create a dictionary called headers. User agent is the key. And what we got from Google is the value. And now we need to add the headers to the actual get request. So we'll add headers. Let's try it now. And again, not what we want. There's one more thing we need to do. There's about five or six headers that are included automatically by this request library. We need to remove the header called accept encoding, and it's actually pretty easy to do so. All you do is you write the header name, accept encoding, and you give it a value of none. Now this library knows not to attach this header. And we need to make sure that this function knows that this is the headers argument. So we make headers equal headers. Try again. So we have a huge download here. I get the feeling this is the right one. So unfortunately, it's very large. And if you scroll to the top, you'll see that we're not at the beginning. So at some point, it cuts off. So I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to find the price in here. So something we can do is just create a file and output this to that file. We can do this all in one command by just using the pipe operator x.txt and we should have a new file somewhere here there it is x.txt we can open it up and here you could see that we're starting from the beginning of the HTML so if I do this there's that price we don't need this file anymore So the next thing we want to do is navigate through all of this HTML, and for that we need an HTML parser. So again, back to Google, Python, HTML, parser. So I've used this one before, LXML, and again we need to install it, pip3 install, LXML. Let's give this a nicer name, response. And we can copy this example. Plug this in here. Tree XPath div, right? So now what we need to do is find this inside the HTML so that we can reference it correctly. Here we are. So it's a span with an ID price block. So very similar to this example right here. Span class, we're just going to replace this with the ID and this with the actual ID. ID. And that's the actual HTML ID. So ID equals this. And slash text means once you get here, you go inside the text. So the span closes here, the span opens over here, and this little thing is the text right here. And so if it works, we name it the price, print price. Yep, there it is. It looks kind of funky when you print it, but It'll work. So something right off the bat that we don't need is we don't need this to be in a list. You could see that it's in an array or a list by these square braces. So we'll just take the first element of this list. So we don't really care about this. This is Canadian dollars because I'm in Canada. We want to split by the space bar and just get the number. So what we can do with the price is call split, which will give us an array where the first element will be this and the second element will be this and we can just take the last one which we could do with one give it a test and there's our price 429 so we can say Canadian dollar price so this is all we need to do the last thing we want is for this function to actually return this price to us 
So we're actually just going to return this price right here. And now that I think about it, a better name for this would be get price because it's actually getting the price for you. It's not just checking it. All right, so this first point here, it's done. Now we have to move on to the second point. We want to actually be notified when the price drops to a certain number. So for this part, we can just use a simple if statement. So this is the price. And we can say if price less than 400. For now, we'll just print send email. And we don't really need an else because that's the only action we care about. And now we have to move on to this part. So we're going to make another function. We're going to call it email price. So our bot is actually going to need an email to send the email from. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create an email account, which this program can use to send emails to you. I've gone ahead and done so already. The next thing you're going to need to do is enable less secure access. It's recommended that you keep it off, but we'll need it on for our bot to access our email. You'll need to go to your email settings, go down to security, find this part, less secure app access, and flip this on. Once this is flipped on, Gmail will allow your program to access this email to actually send emails on its behalf. All right, so far so good. So let's move on to the last piece. Let's actually do the emailing part. We're going to use something called SMTP. There's a great guide on realpython.com and I'm just going to follow it to the T. So right here, this basically shows you how to set it up. You can read about it over here, but we're just gonna copy this code and drop it in here. And just fix the spacing. Move the import to the top. And there we have it. So this is going to work for Gmail. So that's the server, that's the port email. We're going to use my email, or you should enter your own email. And this is that same email I created for this purpose. So input is actually going to show what you type in here. Because it's a password and I want it to be a little more secure, I'm going to hide the input by using a library called getPass, but you don't have to use it. So we'll do get pass dot get pass. So I don't need all these comments over here. So this logs us in. The last thing we need to do is server dot send email send mail. And if we click into it, we could actually see what arguments it takes. So it takes a from address, a to address, and a message. So I'm going to be sending it to the same email I'm sending it from because it's my email. So I'll be using the sender email as the to and the from. And then we'll need a message. So we can make a variable here called message. Do some string interpolation. That'll be our message. So we're going to set up the server. We're going to log in with the email and password. We're going to send this message from the email we created to the email we created. The only thing wrong here is that we don't have this price yet in this function. So what we need to do is basically pass it as an argument. As you can recall, we got the price before. So when we call this function, we're just gonna pass the price into it email price, price. And what we want to do at this stage is just move that into here. So if the price is going to be less than 400, we should get an email, assuming everything worked. So since we know that the price is not less than 400, it's not going to send the email. So let's say it's less than 450. That should work and it should actually email it to us. So let's give it a shot. 
Oh, we actually have an error. Not supported comparison between string and int. So the issue is that this is not a number yet. It's actually a string. Now there's different types in Python for representing numbers. Integer is one, and it's actually the one we're using over here. But this does not have decimals. So because we want decimals, we want to cast it to float. Not cast, convert. And before we run it, actually, let's open up our email. So we have it open right here. Empty inbox. Let's give it another try. So we need the password. So it finished with no errors. Let's check our email now. And there's our email. Audio Technica is now $429. So we can mark number two done as well. There's actually one more thing we need to do though. We want this to run automatically, not just when we hit run in the command line. So it's really easy to do that. All we need to do is to basically put this whole thing into a loop. We can do that by doing a while true. True always evaluates to true, which means this loop will continue no matter what. But we want to pause it so we don't spam Amazon and we don't spam the email client. Pausing it can be done using the time library. And for that, we need to import it. Import time, time.sleep. To get it running once a day, we're going to take 60 seconds, which is one minute, multiplied by 60 to get one hour, and multiply it by 24. This is going to give us 86,400 seconds. Very important to fix the spacing. One small tweak needs to be made here to make sure that it runs automatically. We can't ask for the password every time it runs in the loop. We need to have the password when the application starts up. So I'm going to take this out of here. Put it here. And we're going to pass the password to email price. And inside email price, we'll accept the password. And now we can see it's going to be used there. We can reduce this to 60, just to make sure it works. So here we can see it's sending emails one minute apart. So we can shut it down. And we can turn the time back to 24 hours. So there you have it, your very own Python bot that checks prices for you regularly. You can swap this URL out for something else. You can swap this thing out for whatever you want to retrieve. I hope this was fun and helpful. It's a little bit different. And that'll be it. I'll catch you next time.